Hello everyone, Jesse Grimes here, and I'm back here in Southern California. Uh, it's December, and so we've been getting a lot of rain here. And as you can see, this uh, backyard behind me uh, is nice and green right now because of the rain. It's almost like springtime here in Southern California. Um, and I want to show you something very special about this greenery here behind me. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, this is my friend Shelby's mom's house. Uh, three years ago, we lived here, and we had a garden. Um, those are some of the first videos I ever put out um, called Backyard Garden Journal. I'll link to those below so you can check them out. Um, so we had a garden here three years ago and we planted all the regular garden vegetables. Um, it was when I was first learning about companion planting so we planted some companions as well. And uh, since then uh, we did that garden that one season then we moved and there hasn't really been anything done back here. Um, the house has been uh, under construction, it was remodeled and so this backyard was basically just a storage area for the last year it just got cleaned up um, but if some amazing things have happened um, and I'd like to show those to you so even though we haven't done any work in this yard for the last three years it's still producing food for us um, just because we introduced the right plants into this environment so you see this this is one of the original garden beds that we had planted and it's still full of edible greens right now so this right here is chickweed this main ground cover inside this bed. Um, and that's completely edible, really tasty, um, and works really well as a living mulch. I did another video called Living Mulch in the Garden, Working with Your Weeds, um, about another garden where this is growing. And it works really well for that purpose. It covers the soil, uh, keeps that moisture inside. And as a bonus, you can eat it as well. Um, there's also lots of dandelion growing in here. Dandelion is an excellent green, very nutritious. Um, it also helps send down a taproot into the soil and break up that hard clay pan that you often get in suburban environments where they've run over the lots with tractors and earth moving equipment when they're building the houses compacting everything. Dandelion helps break that apart with its taproot. Um, also very medicinal um, and delicious as well. Uh, there's also some of the things that we planted in here itself. The chickweed and the dandelion were just here already. Uh, right here this is borage. This is one of the plants that we put into this garden um, as a companion plant in the companion planting annual garden system. Uh, the borage is a really good insect attractor um, and also it's just very tasty. The leaves, they're really kind of tender, little hairs on them, but they kind of taste like uh, cucumber. They're really delicious. And that has continued to grow in here. It's self-seeded itself for the past few years and spread. Um, there's another one in here that is also a, a native, um, just so, uh, native as in it was here before. Um, that's Malvin Neglecta. That's this common mallow right here. Um, and this one is an interesting one. It's kind of cut up a tough leaf and a bit of like a, a gooey, slimy texture inside. That's because it contains a lot of fatty acids. It's a really good nutritious green that just grows everywhere. You don't even have to try to grow this, it just grows in your, in, as long as there's water, it'll grow. Um, and that's all in here as well. There's also, these are California poppies. We planted in, these in here as another insect attractor as part of our companion planting system. And they've continued to grow. Um, fills this, this yard with nice, nice uh, color in the summertime, um, all those bright red poppies. So this little clover looking plant here. There's another great example of a naturally occurring plant that can just come into your garden and provide food, you, food for you without any work. Um, this is uh, a type of wood sorrel, uh, the oxalis family, and uh, it just came in here on its own. Uh, it's got these large clover shaped leaves, they're edible, they're really tasty. They have like a lemony flavor. Um, some people can use these as uh, like a lemonade drink, put them in water like a tea. Um, and it produces these beautiful yellow flowers. This one's starting to open up here. Kind of like buttercups. They're really, really beautiful. And this just came in on its own. As you can see, it even grew up in this pot right here. We didn't plant this up here. It seeded itself. Um, and nature will provide that for you um, if you just let this stuff grow. Uh, there's no really any maintenance done to this backyard. Um, every summer after everything dries out, it's mowed, and that's about it. Now, as I said before, it is the rainy season here in Southern California. And so you can see this entire backyard is absolutely covered in greenery right now. And a lot of that is, is edible. 
lots of little dandelions here. Um, more of that mallow, more dandelion. And this just all came up on its own. This is a great example of the Malva neglecta mallow plant. Um, it'll produce these really big leaves and this plant will get like four or five feet tall if you let it. You could just keep coming back here and uh, harvesting off of it. It'll stay a little smaller. But as you can see, this is just a nice little example of like what nature wants to do. She wants to create a polyculture, lots of different species, and uh, it all just happens on its own. So this little garden box right here is an excellent example of how nature will just self-seed food for you as long as you give her the right seeds. Um, I built this garden box the year after we had the garden here and so uh, this wasn't this dirt, this soil in here um, was never part of the garden but regardless it's been self-seeded with edible food. Uh, this right here this is a mix of romaine lettuce and arugula. Um, some of the greens that we had in our garden we let go to seed and now there's little bits of arugula and romaine lettuce growing all over the backyard without any work. Um, there's chickweed in here, there's some other small decorative uh, succulents that are going to grow bigger and then we have this in here. This looks like a lamb quarter, lamb's quarter, which is another really great edible um, weed, but this is not lamb's quarter. I'm trying to identify it. I think it might be a nightshade or pigweed, but um, it's definitely not edible. It tastes really bad. But all on its own, nature has put little bits of food in the soil for us um, without us having to do anything, you know? People think gardening is really hard, it takes a lot of work, only if you want to make it look a certain way. If you want to just let it be natural, it'll do all of it on its own. Just give it the right seeds. Here's another great example. This part of the garden, or backyard, is actually decomposed granite. Uh, this is just a little sitting area. And over the years, it's become seeded all on its own, even though it's just, you know, rocks, rocks and sand, basically. Uh, nature's been creating soil in here by seeding it with these little uh, edible greens. Uh, right in here, we've got some grass, and these are little romaine lettuces coming up. We've also got the chickweed in here, as well as some of the dandelion coming up right here. Uh, even in, you know, the harshest environments, Nature still wants to create soil, still wants to create life, and a lot of that is edible. And this plant right here really illustrates the powers of perennials really well. Uh, this is a globe artichoke. We planted this in the garden as part of our, our veggie garden, and uh, it continues to come back year after year after year. Um, it'll produce anywhere from 5 to 20 artichokes on it, depending on how well it's doing. And then um, after you harvest artichokes, you just cut it back right to the root and it'll pop right back up next year. Um, so it's another one of those things. We have done little to no work on this and it continues to provide food for us year after year after year. This here is another great example of a perennial plant in the garden. Uh, we planted this rosemary bush as part of our other garden bed that was here. Um, those were actually removed and, and made into that bed behind me. But they left the rosemary here because it was really happy, really healthy right here. Uh, it smells amazing great for spicing your food obviously and the bees love it a really awesome plant especially in the Mediterranean environment here um, we don't water this thing it just grows and uh, it's really healthy healthy really happy and provides a you know a great uh, source of food for the wildlife here and really excellent you know culinary herb for us to cook with plus you can just come over and smell it every once in a while it's it's lovely so as you can see Growing a garden full of edible greens can actually be quite easy. Uh, all you have to do is just let go of a desire to have it look a certain way. Um, a lot of people might look at this backyard and see just a backyard full of weeds, but with the right perspective you can see a backyard full of abundance, uh, full of food, full of fresh, nutritious green salad for you to eat every single day. Like I've said before, all you have to do is provide nature with the right tools, give her the right seeds. Uh, we have one garden here, one season, uh, we plant lots of different greens and let everything go to seed. That's really important, is letting things go to seed because that's how nature propagates herself on her own. Um, and all that stuff has just spread across the garden. Um, with a little bit of extra work, a little bit of extra care, um, you could have even more abundance here, putting in more perennials, 
uh, more edibles, more seeds, and uh, just letting it do what it does, you know. But even without any extra work, we have a few months worth of edible greens back here. And not only that, but we have an even better environment for the natural wildlife. This backyard is still full of birds, still full of butterflies, and uh, it's just a lovely environment for the natural creatures to come and have a food source as well. Um, that's what really what you know ecological gardening, permaculture is all about, is producing a good environment for the rest of life. And that environment will provide you with a good environment. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you've got a little bit different perspective on how you might be able to garden in your own backyard. Um, it doesn't matter what climate you're in, if you're in the dry climate of Southern California or a wet climate, Pacific Northwest, Northeast, it doesn't matter. You can do something like this in your garden, either with the whole place or a section of it. You know, let a section go wild, let grow what grows there, and see what happens. You might just uh, come up with some really nice additions to your plate. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe down below. And if you'd like to support my projects, please go out to patreon.com slash jessegrimes and become a patron. Thank you very much.